I have a bunch of productivity apps and tools that you may not have heard of before that I want to cover here. This video is sponsored by Tool Finder. Let's get into it. Tasks is a tax editor. I, I, I'm just kidding. It's, it's obviously a task manager. Task's signature feature is that you can control the various views of a project. So you can have a simple list where you dump a bunch of tasks into it, or you can enable a view not just showing you the tasks that you need to do next, but also all the tasks that are completed. But then you can take things a step further by editing the task status. This allows you to build out multiple fields and create a Kanban system. I love this. It makes so much sense for projects with multiple steps. TAS is great at adapting to your project and not forcing a certain philosophy on you. TAS also supports smart list. There are a ton of options for setting up filters. When setting up smart list, it breaks up your tasks via the project. TAS also has support for collaboration with other users. TAS is one of the most flexible task managers on the App Store. There is support for subtasks, tags, priorities, filters within a project, and more. Focus Work is a timer application for helping you focus on your work. There are a bunch of built-in timers, including Pomodoro and Two Halves timers. These are great for creating work sprints and making sure you're really focused and getting things done, but also reminding you to take quick breaks. With a timer running, you can trick your brain into racing the clock. You can go into focus sessions and pick from a ton of different timer options as well. In here, you can also create custom timers that fit your workflow. Focus Worked also has great shortcut support. This means you can tie it into automations that are built into things like focus modes or manually trigger timers when you want to start working. If you're somebody that likes to race the clock, Focus Work is for you. Classifier may not technically be a productivity app, but I know there's a lot of people out there that build and work out of databases, so I'm gonna count it. Classifier is an app for collections. I've recently started using this for my keyboards collection. I've been taking pictures of all my keyboards, inputting their names along with all the info about their switches, plates, keycaps, and whatever else went into that keyboard. Classifier does a great job at displaying that info and making it searchable. I really like Classifier, and out of all of the database applications that are out there, it definitely has some of the nicest UI at displaying this information. Everlog is a journaling app, and it is very flexible. With Everlog, you can create multiple journals, add photos, weather, and location information to it. I find journaling to be a great way to start off my day. It helps me like kind of set an agenda and a task list for all the things that I want to get done, but it also helps me, you know, establish priorities. Everything that I want to do in a given day sometimes can be a little much and I might not just be able to get to all of it. So with journaling, it helps me kind of figure out what to prioritize over other things. Most journaling apps on the iPad really want you to use the Apple Pencil and hand write out notes. But there are people like me that just prefer to type things. I mean, I literally have a wall of keyboards. Uh, and personally, I'm just faster at typing than I am at handwriting. Plus my handwriting looks like chicken scratch. This is really where Everlog comes in because it's focused on typing and not handwriting. The thing that makes Everlog stick out to me though is the ability to create user customizable templates. Now there are a few templates built into the app, but I created my own. Everlog also has a built-in reminder system to nudge you to journal every single day. This is really nice. And one of the really nice benefits of having typed out journal as opposed to handwriting something, especially in like a notebook, is that you can search. So I can go back and like, hey, what was that day that I was working on this specific video? And what was my thought process for getting that done and stuff like that? I can just go back and search for that. Everlog is a great place to start journaling if you've never tried it. This video is sponsored by Tool Finder. Tool Finder has over 250 plus productivity tool recommendations. Curated by Keep Productive, the world's leaders for helping you choose your productivity tools. When jumping into Tool Finder, you are greeted with different categories to check out. But if you scroll down, they have an interesting section about this month's hottest tools, which I found really interesting. When using Tool Finder, you can just search for whatever kind of tool that it is you're looking for, whether it's a task manager, calendar, email app, or more. There are also helpful categories like AI tools that will show you all the apps that integrate with some sort of AI. 
Tool Finder also has extremely good editorial content to not just give you links to apps and services, but to explain why you should be looking at that certain tool over another. They even have articles on features that were announced at WWDC for Apple's platforms. And if you want to see the hits, check out Tool Finder's top 10 articles for various categories. So whether you're looking for a notes app to write some personal thoughts down or a project manager to use with your team, check out Tool Finder. Tool Finder has the best recommendations out there to help you find the best app or service to fit your work. Tool Finder is completely free, so go check it out. I'm gonna put a link to it in the description below. Just right there, you can go click on it. My thanks to Tool Finder for sponsoring this video. Calendar 366 is a more robust option than the built-in calendar app. While not quite at the level of Fantastical, the main difference is this is a paid up front app, so there's no subscription. I've heard from a lot of you that like Fantastical, but the, the recent price increase is just a bit too much. What Calendar 366 does to set itself apart from the built-in calendar app is it has natural language input like Fantastical, which is something I'm still surprised the built-in calendar app doesn't have. But with Calendar 366, you can go into the settings and enable focus natural language input first setting. And this will jump right to the natural language bar when you start inputting a calendar event. Having support for natural language input really speeds up adding new events. So if you're somebody that lives out of a calendar, this is a must have. Calendar 366 also has support for calendar sets. This allows you to display just your work calendars when you're working or your personal calendars when you're on your time and you can shut off the work stuff. I love this feature in calendar apps. Calendar 366 also hooks into focus mode so you can set up a default calendar set in a given focus mode. So again, you can enable work calendars when you're in your work focus and personal calendars when you're in your personal focus. Calendar 366 also has a ton of customization options for those that wish to make it their own. This is a great middle ground if you need something that's a bit more than the default calendar app, but you don't need to go as heavy handed as something like Fantastical. Sticky Widget is an app that adds post-it-like widgets to your home screen. We've all worked with those people that have like a desk just covered in post-it notes. This takes those and makes a digital version out of them. With Sticky Widgets, you can add a bunch of notes to your home screen in various widget sizes. When you tap on them, you can write your note and it will show the note right on the home screen when you're done. This is a great way to write a quick reminder, jot down a phone number or address, or just take down a simple note. Sticky Widget can be customized by color or font. You can also go into the widget setting and change which widget it is. This way you can sync those given stickies across multiple devices, but also have multiple different widgets with corresponding notes and things like that. Scriblet is very similar to Sticky Widget, but instead of it being focused on typed notes, it focuses on handwritten notes using the Apple Pencil. In Scriblet, you make a note in the app, and then you assign a note to a given widget. From here, you can tap on that widget just to jot something down or make a note. Scriblet is extremely customizable. It also uses the Pencil Kit tool set, so you have a variety of different tool options. If you use the Apple Pencil, Scriblet is a must have. It's such a clever use for being in an app, drawing something, handwriting something out, and then you know going to your home screen and be like, oh, I need to make a note of that thing. You tap on it, write out your note, and you close it, and the note stays right there on your home screen. Actions for Obsidian is an app for an app. And this one might be pushing the productivity title, but I'm sure most of you by now have heard of the app Obsidian, have used it, and probably still using it or, or have tried it out at least. But what this app does is it takes Obsidian and basically builds out a ton of shortcut actions just for it. So what I like about Obsidian is the fact that it's just files and folders. Its notes aren't built into the app. It's not trying to silo things off. It's literally just files and folders that Obsidian, the application, is reading. So it makes it really easy to automate. With Actions for Obsidian, what you do is you link your vault, your Obsidian vault, to Actions. It will then build out a whole list of actions you can use in the Shortcuts app. 
This includes things like creating a new note in a specific folder, appending notes. There are a ton of actions for creating, modifying, and even getting your daily note, including an action for checking to see if a daily note already exists, which can be really helpful for automating like a daily journal process or some kind of scratch pad. Then you can create and move folders around. There's also actions for pulling out notes as well. I took a couple of my shortcuts and quickly rebuilt them with actions for Obsidian and it works extremely well. It's really easy to work with, especially if you're not somebody that wants to delve into like, okay, I need to understand how the file structure works on the iPad, but also how it differs from the Mac. Obs Actions for Obsidian just figures all of that out for you. You don't need to mess with any of that stuff. I'm gonna be using this app a lot in my upcoming Obsidian series. That's why I wanted to mention it now. The last three apps might be a bit of an unknown if you've never watched this channel before, but if you have watched some of my other, uh, you know, like what's on my device videos, you probably have heard of these before, but I, I wanted to cover them for those that are new to the channel. So first of these is Timery. Timery is a front end for Toggle. Now Toggle is a time tracking service. People use this to track project time for personal stuff, work, and even billing clients. Toggle is a great service, but it's iOS and Mac app isn't that great. Timery acts as a front end for Toggle. You log in with your Toggle account and have access to all of your Toggle information here. In Timery, you can set up favorite projects and tags so that you can quickly trigger them. There's even a widget for this so that you can enable these right from the home screen. I love how easy Timery makes it to start one of your timers. There's even excellent shortcut support so I'm able to hook in time tracking into my mode cut shortcut. Timery also has a report page that is great at giving you a summary of how your day and week is going. For me, Timery is a must have. I like to keep track of how I'm spending my time and what I'm working on. This helps me make a decision on how I want to proceed with certain projects. Dark Noise is a well, noise app. Surprise, surprise. I struggle focusing a lot with background noises or even music on. Dark Noise is a noise app with a ton of different built-in sounds and you can make different scenes by blending some of those noises together. When I really need to focus, I throw in my AirPods, turn on noise canceling, and set up Dark Noise. It's the best way for me to just filter out the world around me and just focus on the work in front of me. The last app I want to talk about is Ouchie. Ouchie is kind of my new darling app. You can use this to block other apps and websites. It works via Safari extensions for websites or shortcuts for the app. And it does a really good job at walking you through how to set it up. What I do is I use shortcuts and tie this in with focus modes so that when I enable my work focus, it enables my no social filter in Ouchie. So it'll block websites like Reddit, but it'll also block apps like Instagram and Ivory. This way when I'm working and I need to focus, I'm not using these apps or services to distract myself, which is something I absolutely do. I, I was used to be at a point where it was so bad that I wouldn't allow myself to have like the fun apps on my work device because I would just sit there and distract myself. And then I remembered a web browser is a thing. But this allows me to kind of have everything on one device, but be able to separate things out. As somebody with ADHD, this comes in really handy. So there's probably a common through line that you saw in this video, and that's shortcuts. Being able to use shortcuts to tie built-in features like focus with apps like Timery, Dark Noise, Ouchie, Focus Work, all those other apps is really the killer productivity app because you can build these chains and have all these things work together. You're not having to go in and manually enable a bunch of stuff on their own. If there's one takeaway that I, I just want people to, you know, get from this video, it's that look at your setup, look at your workflow and figure out what you can automate. That is what's going to save you time. And it, it's going to bring consistency to your work. And once you have consistency, that's really what productivity is. 
For those that don't know, Shortcuts is a block-based code editing system. It means you just take blocks and you just drag and drop them into the place that you want them to go. You do them in a top-down order. The top is the first action that's gonna run. The bottom is the last action that's gonna run. And it just runs sequentially like that. I have a few videos on how to build shortcuts that I can link to uh, if you're all interested in checking that stuff out. I'll put them in the description below, along with everything else that I mentioned in the video. So that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what your killer productivity tool is. My thanks to Tool Finder for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.